Hello and welcome to Gaffey's Grinds. This is the channel where we take difficult concepts from science, we break them down into small, simple pieces, give you some explanations, then give you guys some practice and an opportunity to master the content. In terms of some quick tips for uh, watching these videos, you definitely should uh, not have your phone on you. It's going to be a distraction. So if you can turn it off, close any open tabs you have open on your computer. Again, especially social media, it's just going to be a distraction. Uh, if I give you questions today, I'm going to give you lots of questions to do in this video. It's really important that you actually do them. Uh, and that's going to help you to master the content. If you're just sitting and listening, then you're, you're kind of wasting your time. And if you've got anything, any comments or anything, any other videos you'd like me to try and have a go at making for you, do leave a comment below. Right, today's video is going to be on balancing, uh, balancing chemical equations. This is something that many students find difficult and there really is no neat reason for it to be difficult. It's not... It's something that I suppose it can be scary in the beginning, but once you get the hang of them, it really is uh, it really is an easy thing to do. But it's all about actually watching somebody doing it properly, breaking it into small steps that you can follow, and then doing enough practice that you master it and you'll know it forever, and it's really easy then. So I'm going to start off with a couple of really simple things, uh, which are going to seem very easy, and then we're going to build it up, make it a little bit more complicated. So let's just start with a quick formula. I'm going to start with this formula here, N2. This substance is nitrogen. Okay. Now, what the two means is this two means that there are two nitrogen atoms. So I can draw them like this. And the two nitrogen atoms are connected together. We call this substance, we call this particle a molecule. So two nitrogen atoms stuck together, N2 shows we've got two nitrogen atoms stuck together. This is two, this is two ways of writing the same thing. So the N2 or drawing up two atoms is the same thing. If we look at another one, let's look at something like H2O. Be familiar with this substance. This is water, H2O. And if we were to write how that would be drawn, then we could write it like this. So H, H, and O. Now, strictly, that's not exactly the order that we would write them in. Uh, the H, the H but that doesn't really matter. So we might not always write them as in HHO, but it's not really important. What's important is that we know that that little number tells us how many of each type of atom we have. So for example, N2 means two nitrogen atoms, H2 means two hydrogens, and there's also an O, so an oxygen. Okay. Right. What I want you to do is I want you to try these for me. So I'm going to write them down here. NH3, CH4, and O2. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video now and wherever you do your practice, uh, I want you to try them two for me, to, them three the same way I've done. Pause the video, do that now. Okay, so very straightforward, very simply. Let's write them down. NH3 is gonna look like this. There's one N. And then we've got our three H's. H, H, and H. Okay, so N and three H's. Now, again, strictly, that's not exactly how those atoms are arranged, but that's not what's important here. What's important is that you are able to figure out how many of each type of atom there are. This one, CH4, well, that's going to be like this, a C, a H, there's one H, there's a second H, there's a third H, there's a fourth H. Well done, we did that. And the last one, O2, that's going to be the same as the nitrogen up above, we've got one O and it's bonded with another O. Okay, now it gets a little bit more complicated than that. Uh, what if we decide, if we go back to our original examples for, uh, for a second, so we've got N2 and we've got, yeah, no, we'll just use N2 for a second. Okay, now what happens if I decide, well, I'm gonna put a number in front of it. So sometimes in an equation, we see we've got this number in front of it. We call this number, if we've got this large number in front, we call this a coefficient. Coefficient. But I don't really want you to worry too much about that word for me. But just if you hear the word coefficient, this is what they're talking about. Now, what that means is you've got three of the thing. So we've got N2, which we know we draw like this. And, but we've got three of them. So here's another N2. And here is a third N2. Like that. So 
but that error is 3n2. So now you might be tempted to go to maybe draw them like this, sorry. You might be tempted, okay, I've got 3n2s, then I've got n6, so why don't I just draw it like this? There's six n's. Okay, well, strictly, they're all, that's not the same thing because this here tells me that I have to have just two connected to each other. So I've got N2 and I've got three of that thing. That's what this three tells me. I've got three of the, of the thing that follows. So I've got three H or three N2s. This here is more like N6 because we've got six N's all connected together. So this here is not correct. This is like N6 is not really like, uh, it's not really like, uh, three N2s, so that would be wrong. What about if I had, say, another example I started with was H2O, and I had like four of them. How would I draw that then? Well, I know that originally my H2O was H and another H and an O. So if I've got four of them, then I've got to have four of them drawn. So. And note that these are different things, the four different, the four different things. So I can't draw them all stuck together. The four different things. So each of these is a molecule and I have four of them. So here I have four of these molecules. Okay, so I can't draw them all connected up because these are four separate things. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get you to do the next couple for me. I want you to do uh, these two. So I've got two H, two, O2 and I've got three CL2. So what I want you to do is pause the video and do those now, please. Okay, hopefully you did it like this. Here is one of our H2O2s, H like this, that's one of them. And you might know this substance, this substance is called hydrogen peroxide. Uh, some people put this on their hair to make it go all white. Uh, might have heard of it called bleach. What this does is it basically strips all of the color substance out of your hair. So whatever substance, whatever particular type of protein that gives your hair its color, be it brown or black or blonde, or not blonde, you're not really gonna, you know, brown or black or red, for example, you're gonna, uh, there's a protein that causes that color uh, to be in your hair. And if you put this stuff in, hydrogen peroxide, then it like strips out all of that protein. Okay, so here is the other one because we, I said we should have two of them. So here is the second one. So there is two H2O2s. Okay, the three CLs or three Cl2s, sorry, here's one Cl2. You've got one Cl connected to another Cl and we've got three of them. So separately, I've got another Cl2 and then I've got a third Cl2. Okay. So we had to do that to get the hang of, we really have to understand that before we go to the next bit. So we're building up uh, our skills. So you really need to make sure that you can do that before you move to the next bit. Okay, I think you could, I think it's pretty simple, straightforward. Okay, I'm gonna make it a little bit more complicated now. We're gonna look at a equation. Okay, so if we take this simple equation, H2 plus O2, so hydrogen and oxygen, and we an arrow to show that we're making water, H. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw a little dashed line, a broken line down here. Down. And the reason why I've done that through the arrow is to separate. Uh, well, basically what I've got here is before the arrow, on the left-hand side of the arrow, I've got things I'm starting with. And in the things I'm starting with on the left-hand side, we often call these reactants, because these are the things that react. These are the reactants. And on the right-hand side, the water in this case, uh, we call this the product, because these are produced. So we've got reactants and we've got products. On the left-hand side are always the reactants, on the right-hand side are always the products, okay? And uh, we've got an equation here. Now straight away, actually, let's, uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna draw them out the same way as we've done above here, using this technique that we learned up here. We're gonna draw them out. So H2 would look like this. H and another H, H2. And our O2 is like this. And then our H2O is H, H, O. Now, all right, so we have an equation which describes what happens when we mix together hydrogen and oxygen, we get water. When we mix together hydrogen and oxygen, we get water. But there's a problem, 
Okay, there is a problem. The problem is that if I count up the atoms on the left hand side, I've got one, two hydrogen atoms and I've got one, two oxygen atoms. On the right hand side, I've got one, two hydrogen atoms, but only one oxygen atom. And that's a problem. Why is it a problem? Well, it's a problem because of something called the conservation of mass. And it's a rule, okay, which we'll, we'll discuss it in another video, but the conservation of mass, it basically says that atoms or matter cannot be created or destroyed. Okay, it cannot be created or destroyed. It can only change from one form to another. So what's the problem? Well, if I start with two hydrogen atoms here and I finish with two hydrogen atoms, that's okay. But if I start with two oxygen atoms and I finish with only one oxygen atom, then that's a massive problem because where has it gone? It can't just can't get destroyed. It can't just vanish. It has to be there and it's not there at the moment. So this, uh, the way this equation is written at the moment tells me that I've destroyed an oxygen atom and that can never happen because if that started happening, then all of the stuff in the world will start to disappear as chemical reactions happen, some of it will get destroyed and eventually there'll be nothing left. And that's obviously not what's happened. The world's been around for billions of years and that's never happened. So this is a rule that we know is true. We cannot destroy stuff. So at the moment, there's something wrong with this. So we have to fix it. Okay, I'm gonna show you the easiest way that we can try to fix this, okay? And we're gonna use a method called Mr. Gaffey's balancing boxes, okay? And it works like this. We're basically gonna put a box around each of the things here. So we've got a box around the two hydrogens, we've got a box around the two oxygens, we've got a box around the water. And there's only one rule. The rule is the only thing that you're allowed to do when you're balancing equations is add another box. Okay, you might be tempted to try and open up a box and just stick in the last, I'll stick in another oxygen atom. And there I've made it. It's okay now. But the problem is, is that now you've changed the substance in the equation. This now is not this substance. This substance says H2O. That's the product that actually gets formed when we mix these things, two things together. And that's not what this is. This is a different substance. It's two hydrogens and two oxygens. And that's not what we have in the products. That's not the reality of what gets formed. So you're never allowed to open the box and squeeze in another atom. Only thing you're allowed to do is add another box. It is that simple. So let's start by figuring out well, where do we need to add another box? Well, on the right hand side, we're missing an oxygen. So if I add another box, I'll get that oxygen back, or that extra oxygen. H. Now this box you'll see has to be the exact same as the other one. So the boxes have to be the same. I've added another box. Now I've got two oxygens on the right and I've got two oxygens on the left. Okay, but I've created another problem. I've now got four hydrogens on the right and I've only got two hydrogens on the left. What will I do? Add another box here. It's one hydrogen, two hydrogens. Notice it has to be the exact same as the box above it. And there we have four hydrogens on the left, four hydrogens on the right. Okay, it really is that easy. The only thing you can do, remember the rule, is add another box. You can never open a box or change what's inside a box. And the key thing to remember is what do these boxes represent? They represent molecules. So inside the box is a molecule. So we've got two hydrogens chemically bonded together. That is a molecule of hydrogen. Two oxygens chemically bonded together is another molecule of, uh, is a molecule of oxygen and so on. And the reason why they have to stay in the boxes and nothing else be added to them is because if you add something to them, you change the molecule. And that's just not the reality of how the equation works. Now, the last thing we have to do is we have to write down the numbers of boxes that we have basically. So here we have two boxes here, we have one box here, and we have two boxes here. And the very last thing we've got to do is copy and paste the original equation down to where the numbers are. So this is going to be two 
H2. If the copy and paste down that plus as well, plus 102, copy and paste it from above. If the copy and paste the arrow, and then gives you two H2O. I suppose the very last thing is we don't generally tend to write these ones here. It's like in maths, we don't always go around writing one X, you usually just write it as X. So what you can do to make it technically more correct is rub out the one. And now you've got a happily balanced equation. It's job done. All right, let's have a go at another one. Let's do another one together. So say we've got N2 plus H2 gives you NH3. I'm going to separate the reactants and the products. And let's write, draw what we have. We've got two Ns in the box. We've got two Hs for the box. And we've got N with three H's there. Yeah. Okay. Same rule. We can only add another box. We cannot change what's inside any of the boxes. Okay. Only add another box. I'm just going to make the pens my pen a little bit thinner. It's getting a bit cramped there. Okay. Right. Let's see a problem. The first problem I have is I've destroyed a nitrogen atom. So over here, I've got one, two, and over here, I've only got one. So what I need to do is I'm gonna start by putting another box over here. So that gives me my second nitrogen, but I also have the three hydrogens. It has to be the exact same box as what's above. Okay, so now I've got my nitrogens fixed. Now, but I've also created one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens. Okay, so I'm going to go to my hydrogen, hydrogens over here and see if I can balance them out. Well, if I add another box, that's going to make it four hydrogens. So I'm going to need to add another box. That makes it six. So let's write down the number of boxes. One, three, two. Copy and paste down the equation. We've got one N2 plus, don't forget the signs, plus three H2. Don't forget the arrow to give you two NH3s. The last thing I suppose you can do if you want is get rid of that one, rub out the one. And there again, you've got a happily balanced equation. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get you guys to do this one. N A plus F2 gives you N A F. Okay, so what I want you guys to do is I want you to pause the video and I want you to try this and the answer is gonna follow in a second. Okay. So you should only be watching if you've tried to do that one. The answer is, I'm gonna write it down here. I'm actually gonna write it in red. We should have like this, two, one, two. If you got that right, well done. You can skip ahead a little bit in the video until we do the next little set of questions in a minute. If you didn't get it right, then just stay tuned and I'll show you one more time how to do it. Okay, so if you didn't get it right, I'll show you one more time. All right, so here we've got Na by itself, so that's in a box. Here we've got F and another F in a box, F2. And over here we've got Na, F, and they're in a box. All right, so straight away, first problem I see is that I've destroyed one of my F's on the, on the product. So I'm gonna put my line down here. I've destroyed an F, so I'm gonna add another box over here. And there is my other F back. But I also need Na, okay? Which means I've created another nitrogen on the right. 
All right, so another sodium, sorry, this is sodium Na. That means I've got to do another one over here. So my numbers are gonna be two, one, two. So I'm at two Na plus one F2 plus two NaF. I can rub out the one, get rid of it. All right, well done. If you got that right, good job. You're ready to do some practice of your own. Okay, so what I'm going to get you to do is I'm going to get you to take a look at these ones. I've got 12 for you to do all together, but we'll do the first six first of all. Okay, uh, all of these should be pretty straightforward, I hope. So I'm going to get you to pause the video. I'm going to get you to try them now, please. All right, so you should only watch it if you have, uh, if you have done these okay again if you're just going to be passive if you're not going to be active while you're doing this you're not going to learn it very much if you do these and you do the 12 then i pretty much guarantee you're going to master this and be able to do it forever okay all right so these are the answers coming up check them correct them with a red pen okay uh if there's something you didn't get right then just have a look for any really obvious glaring mistakes and if you can't figure it out then i suggest that you just Scribble it out and start again from scratch. Okay, so sometimes that's the best thing rather than to work through it and try and figure out, oh, where did I make a mistake? Um, if you can't find it pretty obviously, then you need to maybe start again, start that one again from scratch and have another go. All right, here are the second six. Again, they should be pretty straightforward, except for maybe the last one, the 12, question 12 that has the OH in the brackets with the two outside. Now I've told you before what that two means. So um, hopefully you guys will be able to do that. If not, I'll give you a hint when I show the answers. Okay, so you should only be watching if you've got these done. With number 12, it's a challenge. Don't forget that the two means that everything inside the brackets is multiplied by two. So that means you've got MG, you've got one MG and you've got two O's and two H's. Okay, so if you didn't know that, that's what that two means outside of brackets. It means it's two of everything in the bracket. So two O's and two H's. All right, so maybe have a look at that again and make sure that that's what you've done. And here are the answers. Okay, well done. You can now balance equations. Um, if you've got all of them right, then that's excellent. If not, please do leave a comment below maybe and tell me which one you found uh, difficult or um, if there's anyone in particular you, you you would like me to go through in more detail, then well, we can I can make a quick video follow up to this. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you managed to do it okay and you got it uh, first time. That's great. Well done. It's a skill you have. If you know it now, if you're able to do all them, then I'm pretty confident that you can do anyone that you get asked about. So well done. That's it, guys. Thank you. Uh, don't forget to uh, to like the video. It helps the channel. Uh, subscribe for more videos on uh, Leave and Start Chemistry, Junior Start Science, and uh, leave any comments, ask for anything that you want me to do uh, in the future. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next video.